highest Joseph here from Breakaway Camber here. We'll go do a quick walk around for our auto trail F70 here. So when you come to pick it up you get given the keys. So you've got the vehicle side of the keys which will let you in the doors, the ignition, the bonnet release. This one the habitation door central locking, so it will work off that key. You've also got the bike lock keys and this one will work all your external lockers. So if you need to be under the bonnet for anything, ignition key, <coughs> slots in there, to the left, to the right, and up. That's it. Let's see if you need to top your washer bottle up, it's there. But we'll make sure that's done before you pick the vehicle up anyway. Tone points is the front tone eye point here. Your eye to screw in is underneath the passenger seat inside, and there's no tone eyes on the back of these, so you can't get towed backwards, always forwards. And there is a tow rope in the gas locker, but any damage caused by tone will be billed to the customer. Diesel fuel only, when you pick it up, it'll be full. Always bring it back full. Go in there. I've got add blue on as well, but we'll make sure that's topped up for you when you pick the motorhome up, so you don't got to worry about that, unless you're on a long hire. If you have got it out for a few weeks, it might need topped up, but it will come up on the dash telling you that. You can get that at the service stations. Up on the sun visor, you have your RAC number on that bit of paper right there. So if you have any breakdown issues, you can give them a call. Any punctures, anything like that, you can give them a call. The spare wheel is slung underneath on the back. But you can give them a call, they'll come out and change it over for you. See if you're crawling under there yourself doing that. Right. Empty in your toilet cassette. So, before you go to pull this out, always make sure the blade's shut on the toilet inside. I'll show you that in a second. So as long as that's shut inside, you just lift this little hand at the bottom here, and it'll slide out effortlessly. Take the cap off, tip it up, hold that little blue button in there, that lets it in, and it all comes flowing out. When you've emptied it, put some fresh water through there with a the hose, and just give it a squish around, and pour that out. Then in the gas locker there's some toilet blue, you just pour a little bit straight in here, and put the cap back on. And shut it like that, and simply slide it back until it clicks. Your rear storage locker. You can access from either side of the vehicle. So in here you've got your outside table, your outside chairs, your barbecue, your water hose, your electric hookup lead, your level ramps, your jack and wheel braces also in there. And you can put all your bits and bobs in there and forget about them. So to lock these, what you have to do is Turn them, the pull the door in, lock them when they're sticking out, and just tap them in like that, and that's it locked. If you're taking bikes, what you do is pull the rack down, you'll undo these two here, and they'll flip over them two bars, stop it bouncing up and down, then you just lift these up. Your bikes on, and they just go over the wheels, and just like whatever all you want on there. And your keys for these locks are on your vehicle keys. So all you do is clamp them onto the frame, tighten them in, and lock them up. And that'll be your bike secured on there. There's also a separate strap which comes with it. So it's advisable just to put that round the bar and round your frames, and put it on just as a bit extra. In case they do come loose or fall off any. You've got your access to your storage compartment this side as well. Now your gas locker. You have your toilet cassette blue, so when you empty your toilet cassette this is the blue you have to put in. There's some little indicators down the bottle side there. You're only looking to put about two of them indicators in when you change it over. 
Watch you don't get it on yourself because it's stained your clothes. You've got a small little tool kit down the back here. You've got your tool rope. Now your gas balls, when you're driving, you must have it turned off at the bottom. So that's this little dial on the top here. So to turn it on, anti-clockwise, just keep turning it until it stops. And to turn it off clockwise until it stops again. If you manage to run this one dry, same again with this black one here, hand tight, exactly the same way, just undo that and switch it over to your back bottle and open that one and that'll keep you going. But as I say, it must be switched off in the bottle when you're driving. Fill in your fresh water tank. So you've got a 100 litre fresh water tank. So to fill it, you just get the hose, pop it in there, and set it off. But when it's full, it will flow out underneath the van in the middle. So just keep an eye, because there's an overflow in the middle of the van underneath. So as you fill it, just keep an eye underneath, and you'll know it's full when that starts overflowing. So all your wastewater, all your, sorry, all your fresh water you're going to use inside, it's going to go down your plugs. We'll end up in your wastewater tank, which is located underneath here. So on the campsite, there should be a grey water dump station. All you simply do is pull over the top of that and line it up with this. Then just turn it like that, and it'll all just come flowing out. And when it's done, just shut it, turn it the other way, and it'll shut. So the rule is every time you fill it with fresh water, always dump your wastewater same size tanks so you can't get too fresh into one waste. Electric hookup point, well as that up, grab your electric hookup lead which yours is in the back storage compartment and it just simply just pushes on. That gets you 240 into the van. Now in the cab, On your sun visor here for bridges, so 10 foot 3.1 meters. So you're looking for bridges, garage four courts taller than that. No drive throughs or no multi story car parks or these things. Your sat nav and your rear view camera all come on this screen. Automatic gearbox for driving, nice and easy. Now your handbrake. The way your handbrake works is, it's on at the moment, so you just put your foot on the brake and just lift it up like that, push a button and hold it in, drop it down, it'll go off. Put it back on just like a normal one. Just lift it up like that, it'll always just drop back down, that's all. But the light will come on the dash. If you do something wrong, you'll know because it'll keep bleeping at you and the light will not go off on the dash. In your door here, You've also got a checklist, so arrive on site, how to get set up, and leave in site. Basically walk around the van, make sure you've checked everything and done everything before you leave site. Right, we'll now take you inside and show you around inside. Right, on this motorhome, your habitation door will lock and unlock off the vehicle side. So if I lock it, lock that, and if I unlock it, it'll unlock that and send a step out for you. To work your step manually, there's a little button just on the entranceway here. All you do is push that, and that'll send it in, or send it back out. Also, if you do forget to put it away, if you start the van, it will pull the step in automatically, so you can't accidentally leave it out. Right, how to spin your front seats. So you've got your normal one underneath here for forwards and backwards and just above it there's a little half one you just pop it, it just does that and then lets you spin them round so you have them facing backwards when you set up and the same with this one and above your screen here you've got your pack with your windscreen blinds in they simply just suck her on the insides of your two front windows in your windscreen at night so nobody can see in. And underneath this cushion here, this is where all your trip switches are. 
So your 240 trips and your 12 volt trips are all under here. So you can just slide that forward and they're all in there. That's where they will be. Now, above you, you've got your storage compartments. So in this one, you've got your high vis jackets, your breakdown triangle, your little first aid kit. And this one and that one on the opposite side are empty, so you can store stuff in them. Underneath this one, you have got a bit of storage under there if you want to put some bits in. And if there's more than two years travelling, see there's four years and you're using these back seats, you can, what you can do is, if you take this cushion off, take this board out, and that way you can sit as two people for traveling and use the seat belts. You can pop these off as well if they're in your way, just behind them, some little clips, and they just pop off. Kitchen, cupboards above, We'll have your cups in your glasses, your electric kettle, your gas kettle, your electric toaster, your placemats and everything in here. You've got your hob grill and oven, which all work off gas. So providing your gases onto the bottle, it all work. With your top one, all you do is simply just push the button down, turn it, and it'll light. If you've had this on for a while, don't put the glass lid straight down, let the glass uh, cool down before you put the glass lid down or it'll shatter. Same with this one, all you would simply do is choose whether you want the oven or the grill and spark it and it'll light underneath. And in there you have your grill pan and grill tray and that. In this bottom one, you have your pots and pans back there. And this one has all your plates etc and that in. And your utensils and that are in there. Your sink is under this one, your bits in. And this is a light switch for your kitchen area and your 240 volt socket for plugging stuff in. Under this bottom one here, you have some cleaning products. So you've got some uh, a dustpan and brush, some bags for the door on your bin and your kitchen roller in there for you. Right guys, your fridge freezer. So to open it, you just slide it the side like that. So you open. So you've got your little freezer compartment at the top and your fridge and your bottle cooler at the bottom there. Now, the way this works is it can either work off mains electric, like we're on at the moment, or if you're wild camping, you would have it on gas from the gas bottle. And when you're traveling, it'll switch over to vehicle battery. But vehicle battery basically only keeps it as a cool box, not as a proper fridge. So the blue light at the minute, see it's powered on. So if you push this little button here, A for automatic's lit up and it's gone to electric, which is mains electric what we're on at the minute. So if you weren't on mains electric, it should find the little gas symbol, which is there. So if I just hold that, I can move it along and show you. There's the gas symbol. So automatic, mains electric, vehicle battery for when you're travelling around, and gas. So if I put on automatic, you're happy with the temperature, you can move it up or down if you want with this arrow. So see what happy with that? Yes. So it's gone automatic, it's found the electric, and that's the temperature we've got. So what'll happen is, if I unplug the electrics now, it'll start flashing and bleeping. But when you start the van, it'll find the power from the van. So it'll switch over to the battery mode. And when you get to site later on, obviously when you turn the van off, it'll stop getting power. So it'll start flashing and bleeping again. So the best thing to do is always, if you're on hookup on site, mains hookup, is plug your mains hookup lead in first. That way the fridge will find the electric first. Because sometimes if you turn your gas on first, it'll find the gas first and go to gas. But you don't want to be using your gas if you're on mains hookup. So always plug the hookup in first. But if it does it, so basically when you come in, just tap that and make sure it looks like that if you're on mains electric. If you're on gas, you would have the automatic on and the gas flame lit up. If it's on the wrong one for any reason, you can just hold that button in and 
until the symbols start to flash. Then move it to your desired one. So say you want electric. So you yes, click it, confirm it. Happy with your temperature, you can select it up and down if you want. So we'll go for mid-range. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Hit it. And that's it set to electric. Or gas, whatever you want. But nine times out of ten, the automatic will work, no problem. As I say, the only scenario is, is if you turn the gas on first, sometimes it finds the gas first before it finds the electric, that's all. If your air going to be parked up, say you're taking it home before you head off or something, and you're going to be parked up overnight or something and not have it on, the best thing to do is just power it off. So if you're not using the fridge overnight, just power it off, just push that button until it goes off. That way it's not working, then in the morning just simply switch it back on. Right guys, how to work your habitation panel. So when you're traveling, it's powered off. So when you arrive at site, power on. This one says lights, but it really only turns the one light on over the cab. All the other ones will automatically come on anyway when you turn the power on. This one here is for your water pump. So you need that on for your taps to work your shower to work and your toilet flush to work. This one here is your outside light. So that'll turn the outside light on. So if you're sitting there out at night and it gets a bit dark. This one runs through your levels. But really the only level you're really interested in is that fresh water one there. See a hundred percent. Your waste water one, don't really rely on it. They're not the best. I would always rely on your fresh water one. So say your fresh water says like 50%, just work it that your waste is 50% because they're the same size tanks. You know I mean, If it's not showing that, all you simply do is just click through the levels until it comes up to you find the one you want, which will be the waste water levels. If you're going to be wild camping, I wouldn't have your water pump on all the time. I would just put it on when you need it and turn it off. Because even though you're physically not using the taps, it's still drawing off the battery. So you want the least as possible drawn off the battery when you're whale camping. Right, how to use your wheel heating and hot water system. Providing your powers on on the control panel, all you do is just wave your hands in front of the panels and they'll wake up. This one's for your heating, this one's for your hot water. You can run it on gas or electric or both together. Same with either one. So for your heating, you push the button, a little flame for gas goes to blue. That means it's standby. It takes about 30 seconds and it should go orange. That means it's working. So all you do is just press the plus. That first one there, the second one, sorry, with the moon picture. That's your night setting. So that'll keep it at 16 degrees overnight. And all you do is just plus whatever temperature you want, right up to a maximum of 30 degrees. If you want an electric, all you do is just push the electric one, so we just three dots is 16 amps, one dot is six amps, two dots is 10 amps. As you can see, they've both gone orange here, so that means it's working on both of them. Should, uh, should you need to turn the panel off, or, or sorry, should you get a, an apostrophe comes up there, red one, and it's an error code? All you simply do is hold that reset button in there for three seconds and it should clear. Same with your hot water. All you do is select whether you want gas or if you want electric, electric. And similar as it's on frost there at the moment, it's always on frost. And that's up to 40 degrees and that's up to 60 degrees. And that'll be the same, they'll go orange when they're working. So as you can see the heating's on there, both of them are on orange. That's on orange on the electric in a moment, and the gas will kick in soon. It'll all go orange. To turn the panels off, what you have to do is make sure that you turn the gas off and you turn the electric off. And allow them a few minutes to uh, cool down before you turn the habitation panel off. Don't just turn the habitation panel off. Because you'll end up with loads of error codes coming up on the heating system and the hot water system. And that's how you use it. Thank you. Right, your Wi-Fi system. So on the habitation panel, you've got a passcode there. 
and your Wi-Fi key. Should you not be able to find it, this might have just gone to sleep. So simply just push that little button and you need the screen to look like that. If it doesn't look like that and it's got a big battery symbol across it, just hold that in until it powers on and that screen comes up like that. Then always make sure these three wires are in the bottom. Sometimes they might tendency to fall out when the vehicle's driving. Right, in this cupboard here is your wardrobe and your steps in there for climbing up into the bed. So it just lifts out. And you've got a hanging reel in there for hanging your clothes on to cut the shelves. This one is a, just an empty cupboard, but it's also got your fire extinguisher in, which hopefully you'll never need to use. And underneath this, yeah, you have some more storage, some hair uh, bits in there for you. Now your bed set up, you can have it as a double across like that or two singles. This cushion will lift off if you want and you just slide this board back out of the way and that will give you two singles either side that way you can use that as a step to get up or feeling that you use a little step in here to help you get in and out. You've got a couple of storage cupboards over the top there and on the shelf there is two little USBs at the top so that's handy for charging like mobile phones and that at night. Uh, this is a light switch here so this one will control the bedroom side of stuff and this one the bathroom side of stuff. Now your TV, I've got the TV set up in the bedroom here so you can lift it off and move it to the front. On the top here all you do is slide that little catch over and it just lifts off and just hooks on the front one and you just bring these two wires around with you and plug them in at the front. Now we can have it set up at the front if you want. Now. Underneath this mattress here, this is where the table is kept. So it's under there. So for the front area when you want to have a meal in it, that's where it's kept. It's not the most convenient one to get in and out when you've got the bed set up. A lot of people tend to use the one in the garage that's used for outside. It's a bit of a better fit in the front area, but that's where that one is if you want to use it anyway. Right, your toilet. So if you remember when I was saying outside about pulling the cassette out that the blade must be shut. Well the blade is this little handle here. So before you go to use the toilet you have to open it. So we'll get this little handle and just slide it to your right. And it opens it. Now you can do your business. As long as your water pump's on you push this little blue button here and it'll flush. Then after close the blade. So you just slide that along. That stops any smells coming back from the cassette or any splashes or anything like that. So that always has to be in the shut position which is crossed to the left to pull the cassette out. If you go to pull the cassette out and there's any resistance on it, that means the blade's not shut. So simply push it back in until it clicks outside, come in and just, just make sure that blade's shut. Just shut it properly. Now your level, so how you know your cassette is full, is down the back here. There's a little green indicator. That gradually goes redder and redder. That's how you know that your cassette's full. Right, in this cupboard underneath the sink, you have your towels, your face cloths, and some spare loo roll there for you. This one's just got some empty shelving in for you to put your bits in. Then you have your shower. Simply all you do is just pull the screen around and your shower and bits are on this wall here. Right guys, now your roof fence and your window blinds. So this one above the kitchen, all you do is just turn this dial and it winds up. And what you do is power it on and you can either suck cool air in from outside or suck the air from inside out if you're cooking. So all you do is make sure it's wound down when you're done. Like that, that's it shut. It does have a night blind on it to make it nice and dark at night. Now your back one, you've got one in your bathroom area and one at the back in the, your bedroom area. So all you do with these ones is just pull that little catch down 
and just squeeze the two handles in and it'll pop up. You see it to shut it, just the reverse, just pull it back down. Make sure that's clicked up out of the way. Now if we go to your windows, all the windows are the same in the back of the motorhome, so they've all got your fly screen on, your night blinds for at night, or you can have them up out of the way. So when you're traveling, make sure they're always shut like this. So that's the lock position as it is here at the back. To open them, all you do is just simply undo these nuts on the side, open it, and just tighten them nuts up, and they'll hold the window open for you like that. And to close it, just undo them, bring them back down, and turn the handles, and just nip them up a bit. Just always make sure they're in that position when traveling. Now your roof ones are the same, so always make sure they are closed when traveling as well. Because with them being plastic, they'll just fly off in the wind. So always make sure your windows are shut, that roof end is shut, the roof end in here is shut, and that roof end is shut. Right guys, how to work your drop down bed in the front. So as long as the key's in that position, just push this button down and it will start to drop down. It will stop automatically like that when it hits the stop. Then come forward. You have to take this off. All it does is unclip off these and let the curtains go back. If you've got youngins sleeping up here and you're worried about them rolling off, there is a net and that pulls out all the way around. And all it does is hook into these around this top to stop them falling out. When you need to access the bed, don't climb on here or the cushions or anything. Get the ladder out the garage in the back. And all you do is simply just clip it onto these little hooks here. And that gives you access into the bed. Now to put the bed away, make sure you put the cord back on so it pulls both the curtains in so they don't get tangled up in the motors. Make sure you put your net in the way all the way around. Make sure there's no bedding on it, so no duvets or no pillowcases, just as it is with this base sheet on. And if you go back to the panel and just press the power button back up, it'll send it up. And that's it. Right, on your habitation door, so to open it, you just pop it like that, it opens. You have a fly screen on here, so if you're sitting in, it's a nice day and you still want to get the, get the flies in. But be careful that the door doesn't swing round, because the bin will go through the fly screen. You've also got your bin on the door here, in some spare bags for that were underneath the fridge, in that little cupboard at the bottom. You have got your telly handset, fire blanket. This is a bracket for the telly, so you can move from the front to the, uh, sorry, from the back to the front. And it just hooks up there and your TV aerial goes in there. Gets your power for it. QR code here. You scan that with your phone, your camera on your phone. Take it to a YouTube view of me showing you how to set the telly up. How it all works and that. Then on the back of these cupboards here, you have some more QR codes. Which will show you how to set your heating and your hot water up. How that works. How to do with the fridge. And there's also a walk around to the van there and how things work in the van as well. Right, how to set up your TV? Press the menu button on the handset and scroll along to settings. Then down to channels. And channels at the top. Then channel scan. And that'll start the search for channels for you. I've already got the channels on, so it's not bad. And if you want the smart side of stuff, just push the home button. And that'll bring up a smart side of things. So you've got your YouTubes and Netflix and everything, which you can sign on to if you've got accounts with them. Just press exit to get back. If it's not connecting to the Wi-Fi for any reason, you simply do this, just go to menu again, 
and scroll back along to settings and there's your Wi-Fi there you just click on that and you can sign on the Wi-Fi with a passcode that's above the fridge in the kitchen area right so a quick run through so when you arrive at site uh, the first thing you want to do is step back from the motorhome outside when you're going to your pitch have a look see if it looks level enough just eye it up if it is great if not you've got your leveling ramps in a bag in the garage on the back put them under whichever wheels you want and drive up them get the level the van as level as you can if you're on electric hookup get your hookup lead out of the garage hook that up hook it up to the campsite then turn your gas on at the gas bottle come inside turn your power on at the power at the panel lights on come to your fridge just click that little outline button and just make sure whatever power source you want to use is lit up so like now it's on electric if it was gas you would have the little gas symbol lit up if not switch it over by manually doing it then you can set your heating and your hot water up as you want them and that's basically a van set up ready to use if you were on if you were say wild camping uh, it's obvious you would have to run your fridge your heating and your hot water off the gas because you'd have no electric your 240 volt sockets will not work because you're not getting any 240 in the van so the only thing you would have to charge stuff would be like your little 12 volt usbs on there or on the cab dash of when you were driving uh, when you leave in sight your checklist is in the door to do the reverse of stuff basically so it's disconnect your power lead turn your gas off empty your waste water fill your water up if you want it for the fresh for the next site when you get there make sure your roof vents are shut your windows blinds and windows are shut you're heating your hot waters off this is we'll switch over to electric when you're set off your panels off all your bits are stored away your compartments are shut everything's on that list in the door so just make sure you go through that before you set off and make sure everything's okay for it i see as well as your qr codes around the van to help you with things there's also a little file in the top here so if you get that out basically just runs around the van showing you in diagrams how things work around the van living and also some tele instructions and that in the back there and things like that for you and also up here you've got your camping and caravan club guide so if you're looking for any sites around the country there's a guide there for you so hopefully you should have everything you need to have a nice break